And we are a church in the southwest corner of Calgary. And what we're all about, what we're all about is finding in the way of Jesus a new way of being human and alive in this world. A way connected to God. Now, I forgot to mention something really important. And I usually name this thing. I usually get it right off the cuff because I've been saying it so long, it just kind of automatically comes out. But I forgot to say it. Two things, actually. Oh my God, I'm, I am losing my game. Two things. Let's rewind and start over again. My name is Nick. We got that. I'm the minister of Red Deer Lake United Church. We got that. We are an affirming church that gratefully gathers on Trinity Seventhly. And what we're all about, here we go. What we're all about is finding in the way of Jesus a new way of being human and alive in this world. A way to connect to God, each other, and ourselves. This way of life that leads towards those beautiful things like hope, joy, peace, and love. This way of life that transforms this world into the kind of world that God made it to be. A world where everyone has enough and everyone has a place. And so whoever you are, whatever you've got going on, whether you are super churchy or you're like, I don't really know about this whole God thing, cool. There is space for you here. There's room for you here. This is still a good place to be. What we're about to do is doing that one thing that we have to do to become truly human and fully alive. And that's tap into God, that's something bigger than ourselves, that source, that mystery behind it all, and find there a life that hums with friends. And so I'm so glad that you're here. This is gonna be a good time together. But before we start, let's take a moment to start uh, well. Let's start with a prayer. Let's start with a breath. Let's take some time to finish arriving, to set our intentions and show up and open. So do whatever you have to do to pray. I'm going to say some words, but you do you. And let's enter into our time together. So my friends, may grace and peace be with you. Let's start with this. So God, here we are. All kinds of people from all kinds of places, all kinds of stories, with all kinds of stuff going on in us and around. And we're here to connect with you. We're here to connect with ourselves. We're here to connect with others. And through all of it, find some things we're looking for. Some hope, some joy, some peace, some love, some belonging, some comfort, some courage, any of those things, all of those things. So God, we turn ourselves in this time over to you and we ask that you do your thing. And we say this in the beautiful, strong, and liberating name of Christ by saying together, Free to God, you give us life. Your image formed within our souls. Yet through the midst of time and space, we search for that which makes us whole. Through hands that paint with justice, God, and voices chanting. Through hands that paint to justice cause, 
Okay, my friends, today we have a sermon for you, and we're going to call this one Getting Lost, Getting Out. No, back that up. See, here's the thing. I love names. I love titles, but I suck at naming things. And so I can't even name my own sermon. I can't even remember the name I gave it. So I'm calling this one, I need to look at my notes. We're calling this one Getting Out, Getting Lost, and Getting Found. What a magical bush and being abducted by wonder have to do with discovering who we really are. Yeah, that's what we're calling this one. So my friends, grab whatever you need to grab to enter into this, whether it's a coffee or some, this is my note taking motion. Um, and let's do this. Let's enter into this. Let's lean into it. All right, so my friends, uh, I'm going to play with a story that's really really old. It's a story about a guy named Moses, and it is quite a story. And it's quite a story for all kinds of reason. And when this one first begins, Moses, he is a guy who is a walking contradiction. See, Moses, he is Hebrew, but he's also Egyptian. So that means he's a slave, but he's also free. He's oppressed, but he's also the oppressor. He is poor, but he's also wealthy. He lacks, but he's also privileged. He is powerless, and he's super powerful. He is as subhuman as you could possibly get, and he is close to, the, to God as you can possibly get. Yeah, Moses is a walking contradiction. And so really, as the story starts out, Moses is having this, this existential crisis. He's a guy who is rumbling with some really powerful questions. Who am I? What am I about? Who's am I? Where do I belong? What is my fire? What's my purpose? What is my passion? Which really makes this story, his story, a story about answering those questions. It's a story about finding his true self. A story of finding the sacred answer to those sacred questions of who am I and why am I here? Yeah, that is what this story is about, which makes it our story, doesn't it? It makes it a story about us because we're also asking those questions, aren't we? Who isn't asking those questions? We spend so much time and energy trying to answer those kinds of questions, rumbling with all these identities that we have and have been given, trying them on, seeing what fits, experimenting, playing, struggling, sometimes suffocating. You know, all the while we're trying to figure out, who am I? What am I really about? What is my fire? What's my joy? Trying to find a deep, deep sense of being and belonging in this world. You know, anyone know those kinds of questions? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know that story? Yeah, I think that's all our story. And so Moses' story, that's our story. And Moses' story is a really important one, not just because it's our story in that sense, not just because his questions are our questions, but his story is so important. It's endured for so long because it's a story about how to find the answers to those questions. It's a story that gives us a blueprint to discover who we truly are. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know about you, but that's a story I want to hear. That's a story I need. Because I'm still trying to answer some of those questions. I'm still trying to figure some of that out. And so Moses' story, at least the part we're looking at, it starts off with the guy who's in the midst of all those questions. He's struggling with it all. And then he sees something that changes everything. He sees something that rearranges the air and brings all that conflict, all those contradictions to the surface. He sees that his people, the Hebrew people, are being oppressed. And that sparks this existential crisis, this war within himself. 
and it forces him to try to reconcile all those different identities and figure out just who he is and where he stands. And as the story starts out, we can kind of see him trying to figure this out. There's this one time where he sees this Egyptian slave master beating a slave. And he steps in, but instead of joining in on this display of power, he ends up killing the Egyptian slave master. And then later on, he sees two slaves who are arguing, and he again steps in. But they turn on him. They say, you're not one of us. What are you doing here? We know who you are. Get out of here. We want nothing to do with you. And so not finding anyone to take a side with, not finding any home, not finding any reconciliation, uh, not resolving the tension, what does he do? Well, he does what we all do when we need to try to figure out something and we can't find the answer. He runs away. He tries to escape the tension. He takes it off to a faraway land and he tries to pretend like the whole thing just never, ever happened. He finds a new place to live, he has a new family to be a part of, and he gets a gig as a shepherd. But it's there, it's there while being a shepherd that something really, really, really important happens. It's there he ends up entering into what our tradition would call the wilderness. And now when we talk about wilderness, when we say that word, we're not so much talking about a physical or a geographical place. And we're talking about something spiritual. We're talking about a liminal space. We're talking about those wild, those untamed, those unconquered places. Those places that don't have any maps. Those places deep down within us, those places of vulnerability and uncertainty, of fear and doubt, those places way beyond the ego, way beyond our control, way beyond any identity that we have. These places where we're forced to let go of everything and see what's left. Yeah, that is the wilderness. Anyone, anyone know those places? Do you know the wilderness? I'm sure we all do even though we may not call it that. If you've ever been in a relationship and the bottom has fallen out and you have no idea what is left and you're just struggling to grasp on something, hoping that you can survive, yeah, that's the wilderness. Or maybe you've had success and status and wealth, but still, even after all of that, there is still something fundamentally lacking and you leave it all behind to go and find it. Yeah, yeah, that's the wilderness. Or maybe something you once held to be true has crumbled and fallen through your fingers. And you're just sitting in the rubble, looking at it all, wondering what could possibly be left. How do you recover from this? What do I have to hold on to? Yeah, that's the wilderness. That is what we're talking about. That is what Moses here has entered into. The wilderness is is the in-between spaces of our lives. It's those uncharted territories full of chaos, disruption, and possibility. It's the places where we're no longer who we've been, but we're not quite yet who we're about to be. That is the wilderness. And as scary and as intimidating as it can be, um, it's the place that we all eventually have to enter into. It's the place that we need to go. It's an essential part of the journey. And this is what that foundational truth of you have to leave home in order to find it is getting at. When it comes to looking for who you are, when it comes to finding out all your questions, more often than not, you can't find them where you are. But you actually have to step. You have to risk, you have to wonder, you have to wander. You have to cross that in-between space of who you are and who you are about to become. And Moses, we see him doing this. We see him entering into the wilderness, and we're actually told he goes beyond the wilderness. He goes way past it. He is doing some serious work. He is deep, deep within it. But it's there. It's there in the wilderness, beyond the wilderness, 
that we're told he encounters a burning bush. And it's there he has this conversation with God. And it's there that God gives him all the answers to his question. You know, to get to there, Moses actually has to go through the wilderness. But before we get to the answers, let's pull over here and talk about this whole burning bush thing. Because I know we all have some questions about it. We're all like, really? What is that about? There's this old midrash. Um, and midrashes are essentially stories about the story. And this Midrash talks about how the burning bush had actually been burning for days and hundreds and hundreds of people had walked by it. But Moses, but Moses was the first one to actually notice it. He was the first one to go and see what was up. Because I think it's easy for us to imagine that Moses just saw the bush was like, oh, how curious, and walk over and check it out. But the text here in this story is really specific. Like, oddly specific. Like, it goes into great detail about what Moses thought. And what the text says is this. It says, And Moses said to himself, Please, please let us go over and see that great sight. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It actually records Moses' inner dialogue. The writers of this story want us to know that Moses didn't just see the burning bush, but he actually got curious about it. He saw something. He felt something. Something compelled him to go and check it out. And what do we call that? What do we call that sense of compulsion? We call that wonder. Yeah. We call it wonder. And what does wonder do? Wonder abducts. Wonder isn't so much something that we get, it's something that gets us. Wonder, as the, Abra, as the rabbi Abraham Heschel said, is the act with which the mind confronts the universe. It's when, as Rob Bell puts it, we're invaded by the sacred. It's when we experience something that makes our holes come alive, that makes us hum with reverence, as if deep is crying out to deep. It pulls us into that question that has the possibility to change absolutely everything. What if? What if? What if? What if? What if that's not just a burning bush? What if that's not just a sunset? What if that's not just a coincidence? What if this isn't just a friendship? What if there's more to that question? What if this isn't just a hobby? What if that's not just an ideal? What if? What if it's actually something more? Yeah, that's what wonder does. Wonder pulls us into the what if. It takes us past everything that we've been given, everything that we know. And it opens us up. It opens us up to new possibilities, new potentials, and new ideas. It opens us up to these things we would have deemed impossible that we would not have even been able to imagine. That's why wonder is so crucial. That's why it's such an essential practice for us. Because being amazed, getting lost in awe, being wowed, it opens us up. It makes us ask, what if? Because it does that, it leads to hope. And because it does that, it really does change absolutely everything. And we see that going down in this story. It's there, deep in the wilderness, being abducted by wonder. That Moses has this encounter, this conversation with divine mystery. And it's there he finds the answers He's looking for. He discovers his fire. He finds out who he is. And God's tell, God tells him, he says, this is who you are. This is what your purpose is. You, Moses, you are going to liberate your people. You are going to call out the empire. You are going to lead your people from slavery and captivity into freedom and new life. That is who you are and that is is what you are all about. Oh, and let's just 
name this? Because I think this is actually really cool and actually really important. Let's just note that this isn't new news. It's not like this is a gift that God is giving Moses that that is not present. God didn't just go, oh, here's this brand new thing you're going to be. God just pointed out what's been there from the beginning. All God did was name and affirm something that already existed. Because look at Moses' past. Look at what he's been doing. He's been doing liberating and naming and calling out and leading from the very beginning. That's what those first three conflicts were doing. He was starting out. He was almost there. He was playing around with who he is and what he's about. Because that's the thing about this discovering who we truly are, of leaving the false self and discovering the true self. What we often maybe always discover is that who we are and what we're about has always been there to begin with. We just didn't realize it yet. This is usually why when we end up finding our fire, we end up discovering who we are and we tell our friends, they're like, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I could have told you that. I've seen that from the beginning. That's been the arc of your life. I've seen the pattern. But for us to truly see it and, tr and hear it, we often have to go through the wilderness, be abducted, and it's only then that we can realize it for ourselves. And so having been given this identity and purpose, having figured out what he is all about, you would think that Moses would be all like, yes! God, I am in. Thank you so much. Let us go and do it. But he's not. Instead, he resists. Instead, he's like, um, I, I think you, I think you have the wrong guy. Or you want me to do that? I can't. No, I can't do that. Give me something else. Let's let's talk about option B. And that's just so so true, isn't it? When we find those answers, when we discover who we truly are and what we're really about, when that is affirmed, when God, when God is like, this is you, we usually end up resisting, don't we? We say, nope, I don't think so. I think, I think you want the person over there, and we're not ready to accept it. And I wonder if, if this is where so many of us get stuck. I wonder if this is the end of so many of people's story. Where we leave something, we enter into the wilderness, we get abducted by wonder, and God's like, here you are. We're like, mm, no, actually, I'm, I'm going to just go back. Because so many of us just don't want to accept it. We resist it. The fear of actually being that and doing that is just too much for us. So we, like Moses, we resist. And if this story tells us anything, it's that you can resist. You can wrestle with it. That's a normal, very human thing to do. But the work, the last part of this movement, the last piece of the journey, is turning that resistance into responsibility. It's moving through the resistance to the point where you can say, okay, yes, I accept this is who I am and this is what I'm going to be about. I think that's the last piece, and that might be the most difficult piece, is accepting it and taking responsibility for it. And Moses, having been a friend, having found the reconciliation he was after, having found his fire, having taken responsibility for it. He turns around, he leaves the wilderness, and he goes to do his thing, confronting the empire and liberating his people. And that's where our story ends. That's Moses' first story. And because it's his story, it's also our story. And it's really, as we said at the beginning, this story about that, that movement of finding out how to find the answers to our questions, of figuring out who we are and finding our true selves. It's a story that gives us the template, the blueprint. It's a blueprint of getting out, getting lost, 
and getting found. It takes us stepping out into the wilderness of leaving it all behind. Of being abducted by wonder. Being affirmed by that mystery we call God and taking responsibility for it. And so doing those things that we find out who we are. It's there we find our fires. There we find our joys. There we find our life. And so as we sit with this story, some questions to, to rumble with, some questions for you to take home. What, what wilderness do you need to enter into? How can you practice wonder? How can you allow it to abduct you into something new? What do you need to stop resisting? What fire do you need to take responsibility for? Yeah, those are all some big questions, aren't they? Those are huge questions. But they're important questions. They're life-giving questions. And so my friends, having sat with this story and having heard those questions, the rest is up to you. This is where we take the story and we go off and think, okay, if that's the wisdom of it, what do I do now? What do I do with this? And so as you rumble with that next step, as you take it from here, may you struggle well. May you step out. And may grace and peace be with you.